Of course, the solution is not complete without office or image processing software. As I explained, we have two flavors here. It's a TBC photogrammetry module or the Info US Master. Uh, TBC as the main workhorse for a lot of its surveying uh, professionals out there. Uh, single click processing and then also a lot of powerful features for your foot clouds, CAD or surveying uh, workflows. You have Info US Master, um, most definitely one of the most capable um, packages out there. Um, although very easy and simple to use photogrammetry, photogrammetric uh, workflows, it has that ability, of course, to edit, refine um, any of your deliverables or in, in between deliverables, uh, generate um, very accurate terrain models or, or DTMs and stuff like that. Cool. Let's have a look at the workflow overview. How are we um, actually going forward now and how do we execute the flights with the UX5 HP? Well, the good news is there's not much change. Um, if you have been familiar with the UX5, uh, UX5 HP will be your natural add-on. Um, a few items added in the checklists that we use. These automated checklists really help people to keep consistent um, be efficient and um, just stay on the safe side to make sure all necessary checks have been done and that uh, from a quality point of view we also did everything we can to capture the most uh, qualitative data during the flights. Again, um, preparing the flight uh, happens with Aero Imaging 2.1 um, whether that's in the office environment up front or it's in the field with the tablet doesn't matter too much. Um, Aero imaging guides you through the proper uh, flight settings. At this moment, um, it is interesting to think about what kind of uh, referencing method you want to use. Um, whether that's a, a, a local base station, symbol of third body, um, whether that's a course reference network um, infrastructure, or a VRS. Um, a virtual reference uh, station uh, setup, or a typical common UX5 um, user of ground control points, if you would not have maybe one of the uh, um, upper ones, or if the project does not require any um, accurate geo-reference at all, it's still a possibility to use, don't, do not use that. If you have chosen one of these, doesn't mean you're stuck with it, um, even after the flights. Um, the data can still be manipulated and post-processed uh, with different sources. Um, but it is important to think about this so you are um, efficient in the flight, in the field, by setting up the right stuff, if that would be required. From then onwards, we execute a flight just as the X5 today. The launcher, the, the pre-flight checklist, uh, flight behavior, um, landing, curved, uh, linear landing, it's all exactly the same there should be no difference to you. After the flight, um, we are collecting the data from the vehicle. And for the X5, that was imagery from the SD card on the camera and the log files from the, from the e-box. Well, for the, for the X5 HP, we have um, a couple of more. Um, there is the GNSS file that we're collecting from the G-box. That is a, a .t04 file. Um, extension for the for the G-Box or the GNSS receiver. The G-Box has a USB connection, so we simply connect the GPS, uh, sorry, the USB cable between the G-Box and the, the ground modem, and then in as part of that automated post-flight checklist, that GNSS file is automatically downloaded and automatically stored within the project file of um, Aero Imaging. And then depending on your setup, um, you're collecting as well the T02 file or Rhinox file from either a local base station setup or from a uh, reference station uh, kind of uh, setup with a course or PRS, right? Then after that data has been collected, um, uh, we export um, to, to JXL file. This JXL file is like a structured XML file. Um, making the references and links to the right um, data. And in this example, in, in our workflow, the, the log file from the e-box uh, reads out the raw 
which um, uh, row uh, values, um, accurate GNSS locations are read up from the from the G box, and then that's all linked to the image names of the uh, coming from the SD card. So that's what's in contained into the GXL file. Then we can um, at the uh, processing step, we can simply drag and drop the GXL file into TVC uh, files for the Gramsci module, um, and we add the base or course file as well. That's done to post-process your trajectory. So um, uh, post-processing the, the GNSS image locations against that base file or um, uh, course file allows us to get a very accurate um, project trajectory and then that trajectory together with the images are then processed in the normal workflows that we have today available in TVC APM. Okay. Uh, might sound a bit um, fuzzy here, so we'll just dive into a very fast um, workflow demo of this thing. Uh, let me jump to aerial imaging here. I have a project here that has been flown a couple of days ago. I imported it back into um, aerial imaging on my desktop here, or laptop. So I have the project here. The flight has been covering the green area that we can see in the thumbnail view here. So by just simply selecting the project and select the export option, I can then uh, choose my right uh, output format. As we will go through the Turnbull Business Center um, post-processing and image processing uh, workflow, I'll select the GXL option here. I have only one completed flight, so I'll, uh, I'll continue with this one. A message comes up to give us a warning about uh, possible vignetting effects on the imagery. I'll uh, talk about this uh, in a couple of minutes. Um, at this time, we see that we have had, during flight, e-box triggers. We have had 27 e-box triggers. So um, 27 um, image trigger commands have been given by the e-box. And the g-box has received those 27 events as well. So that's a good start. Nicely synced. Then the imaging asks me to uh, pinpoint the actual um, images uh, location and typically in a webinar the software hangs a bit okay so just double checking so onboard images this is the folder where my images have been stored select and we do have a correct readout of the, the number of images as well and then going forward we are creating the actual GXL file and I have to have already one here, so let me just duplicate this into a second version. Okay, export. And now the file has been successfully exported to my uh, directory. If I have a look at the actual directory um, in my onboard images folder, I should be able to find that JXL file back, uh, correctly named here, images. And then also the T04 file, which has been automatically uh, copied into this export folder coming from the uh, project file in L Imaging. When I open up uh, TVC, I um, have an empty project here. I actually loaded an, um, a GCP um, list already. Uh, this is now not being used, but this is the test site GCP layout that we have available. But um, by simply drag and drop my JXL file again into TBC, I'm importing all my images. I'm importing my um, role, your role and uh, role information. There we go. If you zoom in, you can see that we have a short flight, only four flight lines. Um, this boundary is our actual flight boundary coming from our imaging as well. Uh, TV shows, shows us the thumbnails of the images. Uh, so again, short flight just to demonstrate uh, the workflow here. 
at this point. Let me close this one. Um, I cannot, or I should not be uh, processing the images um, yet, because we still have to post-process our uh, GNSS file. So to do that, I'll uh, go back to my project, and I'll uh, look for my GNSS, or, um, uh, sorry, my uh, base uh, station file. In this example, we were using a course network uh, station that was, um, that was um, close to the actual project area. The, notice that it's the T02 file, and I'll drag this guy into my project area. Okay, and here we can see the actual physical location of the station uh, versus the actual project area um, over here. I think this is about close to five kilometers separated from each other. Okay, so now we have uh, everything loaded, both um, GBOX or GNSS file coming from the aircraft and the uh, reference station uh, file. So I'll go to my survey tab and hit process baselines. And this automatically starts the post-processing of those two files, which will result in this accurate um, UX5HP trajectory, which is then needed to start the, the UAS images, or sorry, deliverable generation. Yeah, it looks good. So let's save this one. And then we can see that was successful because we now also have a view on the actual uh, flight path uh, across the flight. So given our 20 hertz frequency recording of um, um, positions on the GNSS receiver, on the G-Box, we have also a very accurate idea how the aircraft was flying throughout the flight. And again, it shows us how small this project actually was because our overhead of um, extension of flight lines is significant versus the actual project area, of course. And this is the orbit of the X5HP before it goes into the final landing like here. Cool, this is it. Uh, from this point onwards, we can actually continue our very known or well-known um, image processing workflow. Um, whether you're creating a single point cloud only or uh, organizites or um, DSMs, I think most of us will go to the Advanced UAS um, tab and actually create a whole bunch of deliverables at the same time, right? People can, um, as a, uh, to make sure or to prove your data accuracies, it's always possible and even recommended, I guess, for surveying professionals to include a few checkpoints to really show and to illustrate the um, data accuracies. So that's using the same workflows as we have on the X5, simply bringing in any uh, ground control point list, uh, selecting a specific ID on the, um, on the map, and then just um, selecting the observations of the ground control point in this, um, in this viewfinder. Right? So people used to the X5 HP workflow, this will be very familiar. Um, and this allows us to, to show data results and check for them um, after processing. Okay, so I hope this was clear. We, again, we try to keep um, the workflow as smooth and stable as possible compared to the X5 H, uh, to, compared to the X5, H, the X, the X5 sorry. Um, and I think this is um, the most smooth setup. Right. Let me go back to the presentation here. This one. There we go. Now, for people interested in uh, using US Master or any third party software solution, um, let me explain that workflow a bit here. It's pretty similar to the um, TBC workflow. However, we do need TBC to post process our um, GNSS trajectory, or sorry, our UX5HP trajectory. TBC complete or advanced are uh, capable of post-processing L1 and L2. Um, and this needs to be done before we can go to the actual US master or third party software processing softwares. Right? So same workflow as I just demonstrated. We drag the JXL and the base or course file into TBC. 
we have them post-processed to get that accurate um, trajectory. And then we export that, tra that trajectory to a single uh, CSV file, which allows us to import that file together with the images in US Master or that uh, third-party processing software. Okay. 